the uh, announcer. Nobody has to. <laughs> I don't mind uh, inter introducing Dr. Eric Steckler, retired gastroenterologist in uh, Clearwater, Florida. He's a member of my club, uh, Congregation Best Shalom in Clearwater, and very, very knowledgeable and, and well read. Uh, I'm surprised you're not a professor uh, on these subjects, but obviously you've read uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. And uh, I'll call you a historian because you have s such a wealth of, of knowledge and information. And tonight's topic is the history of the Palestinians. And uh, I guess I'll let you take it from there. Yes. So uh, tonight I'll be discussing the Palestinian refugees and Israel, particularly just focusing on the War of Independence, uh, where it all began. Now, after World War II, the Yishuv, the Jewish community of Palestine, went to war with the British uh, trying to get independence. The Haganah, the national militia, and the Ergun, the smaller right-wing militia, attacked British soldiers and installations. One third of Jerusalem was by, surrounded by barbed wire. 16 kibbutzim were established in the Negev, and this helped establish the contours of the future state. In, September, in February 1947, despite having 100,000 troops in Palestine, the British decided they had enough. They threw the mandate back to the United Nations, who established the UN Special Committee on Palestine. Chaim Weizmann and David Ben-Gurion were eloquent in the need for a Jewish state. The Arabs boycotted the proceedings. In September 1947, the UN Special Commission on Palestine presented their partition plan. It would have an international zone with 100,000 Jews and 100,000 Arabs, a Palestinian state, um, Arab state with 700,000 Arabs, and a Jewish state which had 500,000 Jews, but a large minority of 400,000 Arabs. By late September, it was unclear whether they would get the required two-thirds vote in the UN, but Clark Clifford and others convinced um, President Truman to lobby hard for the plan. The Arabs, confident of victory, did very little. November 29, 1947, the UN votes 33 yes 13 no and 10 abstentions to establish a Jewish and an Arab state. The Yeshuv goes wild and Amos Oz, the famous Israeli um, author relates what his father told him. But from now on, from this moment on, we will have our own state. You will never be bullied just because you are a Jew. Not that, never again. From tonight that's finished here forever. David Ben-Gurion, the leader of the Yeshuv said, at last we are a free people. I could not dance, I could not sing that night. I looked at them so happy dancing, I can only think that we are all going to war. The Arab response was quite different. Abdul Aziz, president of the Arab League, he said, if you win the war, you will get your state. But do you really think that we have the option of not trying to prevent you from achieving something that violates our emotions and our interests, it's a question of historic pride. Four days later, the uh, Arabs poured out of Jerusalem and destroyed the new commercial center in West Jerusalem. It's now where the upscale Mamilla Mall is. The British did nothing. David Ben-Gurion was one of the few Yeshuv leaders to see that the greatest danger to the fledgling state would be invasion by Arab countries. He wrote, we need an entirely new approach, greater means and reorganization of our forces and new modes of preparation. Conscription was started and training was instituted to change the Haganah militia into a modern army. The Yeshuv leadership said, 
No Jewish point or settlement should be evacuated. They should be held to the last. The kibbutzim were surrounded by minefields, barbed wire. They had trenches and bunkers. Golden Meir was sent to America to raise funds so the new Israelis can purchase uh, secret arms in Europe and America. She told American Jewish audiences, you cannot decide whether we should fight or not, we will. That decision is taken. You can only decide one thing, whether we shall be victorious in this fight or whether the Mufti will be victors. That decision American Jews can make. I beg of you, don't be too late. The time is now. American Jews responded and raised $50 million, twice what Ben-Gurion uh, thought would be possible. And he wrote, the day when history is written, it will be recorded that it was thanks to a Jewish woman that the Jewish state was born. On the Arab side, Abdel Qadir al Husseini uh, formed a militia around the Jerusalem area. Hassan ben Salama founded a similar one where, around where Ben Gurion Airport is today. Uh, both of them had trouble recruiting and uh, each had less than a thousand full time soldiers. Why? Uh, they were allied with the Mufti. And because who was the leader at this time of the Palestinian Arabs, but he, his organizations had killed thousands of their opponents over the years. Also, uh, during the great Arab revolt in 1936 to 1939, Samaria, the land of West Bank, which is now uh, also called Samaria, suffered God greatly in their defeat and contributed almost no men uh, to the Arab cause. Also, none of the Palestinian Arab leaders uh, fought for independence. The Arab League countries wanted to bypass uh, the Mufti and started their own Arab Liberation uh, Army composed of Iraqi and Syrian volunteers. They were based mainly in the north of the country, but also in the cities and towns. It was led by Faji Khawaji, a, one of the leaders of the Great Revolt in the 1930s against the British. The war slowly intensified. There was fighting on the scene between Jewish and Arab neighborhoods in the cities. There were 60,000 internal Jewish uh, refugees, 10% of the Jewish population. 75,000 wealthy and middle-class um, Arabs left the country, hoping to return when Arab armies were victorious. However, it left a great leadership gap in the country. But sometimes business was just business. Um, Arab and Jewish citrus growers had an informal truce, and so they can um, harvest and export the chief export of Palestine at that time, the Yaffa orange. In the West Jerusalem neighborhood of Kataman, the Haganah blew up the Ceramis Hotel, one of the headquarters of the Palestinian Arab militias. The population composed of well-to-do uh, Christian Arabs fled uh, West Jerusalem. There were bombings in the cities. Here's the Palestinian Post, Ben Yehuda Street, and the Jewish Agency, particularly in February and March of 1947. There were also bombings in Arab areas. Uh, this in Jerusalem was done by the Irgun, and here City Hall in Haifa was destroyed by the Stern Gang, an extremist uh, Jewish group. Jewish settlements were attacked by the Arabs, but were all repulsed. However, the greatest vulnerability to the Yishuv was the roadways, in particular, the 12 miles that went from the uh, coastal plain 
into the 100,000 Jews of Jerusalem. The road would go uh, between Arab villages on the hilltops. Um, truck convoys guarded by Palmach teenagers. The Palmach was an elite full-time uh, unit at the time. The Husseini forces would set up roadblocks and call in villagers to kill, to mutilate, and to loot. Hundreds of Jews died trying to get supplies to uh, Jerusalem. Other convoys were destroyed uh, by the Arabs trying to get to isolated settlements. In the period from the beginning of December to the middle of May, over a thousand Jews were killed. In Jerusalem, Dov Joseph here uh, was head of the Jerusalem Emergency Committee and started food and water rationing. Also at the UN in mid-March, uh, the State Department decided to backtrack on Jewish statehood and wanted a UN trusteeship. At the end of March, uh, given that they were losing the war, uh, ben David Ben-Gurion called a conference of Haganah leaders, which, whose leader uh, was Yigal Yadin, uh, a famous archeologist. They decided on Operation Nachson. They would use 1,500 newly trained soldiers to capture the hilltop uh, villages and allow uh, convoys to get to Jerusalem. But first they had to capture the, uh, gener the village of Castile, about four miles west of Jerusalem, which dominated the roadway. The Palmach captured it. Hundreds of Arabs were defeated trying to retake it. Abdel Qadir al Husseini went to Damascus to get weapons and ammunition, which he was denied. Before he left, he wrote a poem to his son Faisal, who later became a prominent Palestinian leader. He said, This land of the brave is the land of our forefathers. The Jews have no right to this land. How can I sleep while the enemy rules it? Something burns in my heart. My homeland beckons. When he returned from Damascus, he led a successful attack that recaptured the castell, but he was killed in the process. He was the most charismatic of the Arab leaders. His funeral the next day on the Temple Mount uh, had brought thousands uh, to Jerusalem, including the Arab defenders of the Castile. The Palmach easily retook it. And shortly thereafter, the first convoy made its way to Jerusalem. On the bumper of the first truck, it said, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem. Two more convoys made it to Jerusalem, but on April, by April 23rd, the Haganah had to disperse to other locations and the siege of Jerusalem resumed. The Ergun, wanting their own victory, decided to attack the generally peaceful Arab village of 600 people, uh, Deir Yassin. It was a few miles south of the Castell, but things went badly from the beginning. Uh, a truck with a loudspeaking urging uh, residents to flee overturned and never made it to the village. The Palestinian villagers fought back. The, the Ergun, not you, took heavy casualties and not used to urban warfare, panicked. They went from house to house throwing in grenades and TNT. 100 to 120 fighters and non-combatants were killed. The Ergun magnified their victory, saying that 250 Arabs were killed. The Yishuv condemned it totally, also using the 250 figure. The Palestinian Arab leaders also used the 250 um, figure and also said there were multiple rapes, which there were none. They did this to try to get the Arab countries to invade Palestine and also to get backbone into other villagers to defend their homeland. 
it actually backfired and increased the number of refugees. Four days later, on April 13th, the Arabs got their revenge when a convoy going to Hadassah Hospital on Mount Scopus was ambushed. 77 doctors and nurses were killed. The British looked on for hours. In the north, the Arab Liberation Army attacked Mishmaha Emek in the Jezreel Valley. By this time, the Arabs had cut the main road between Tel Aviv and Haifa. And if they captured the kibbutz, uh, the Jews of Haifa would be isolated. However, the Haganah fought back. The Arab Liberation Army was defeated. Many villagers uh, fled uh, before the Haganah even reached their village. Arab morale in the north plummeted. Haifa, before the war, had 70,000 Arabs, 40,000 Muslims, 30,000 Christians, and 74,000 Jews. It was the industrial heartland of Palestine. However, by April 20th, about half of the Arabs had fled, including most of the leadership. Banks were closed. Um, the stores were closed. There was rampant unemployment. There was uh, snipers and bombs on both, both sides. However, on April 20th, the British decided to withdraw from their frontline positions between the two warring uh, factions. The Haganah took advantage of the, this and defeated the, the, the disorganized Arab militias. At the surrender, the remaining uh, Arab leaders decided to evacuate um, Haifa, not wanting to be branded as traitors from the expected um, Arab army return. The British general in Haifa uh, said, you have made a foolish decision. And within weeks, there were only about 5,000 Arabs left in Haifa. Ben-Gurion, when he visited, said, how tens of thousands of people left their towns, homes, and wealth in such panic? What caused this flight? Was it an order from above? Was it fear? But it soon dawned on the Israeli leadership that this could be a good thing, that it would reduce the very large Arab minority in the country. Golda Meir said, Jews should treat the remaining Arabs with civil and human equality, but it is not our job about the return of those who fled. In March, the Haganah uh, came up with Plan Dalit. This was a military plan to defend the borders of the new state by capturing strategic roadways, um, police uh, fortresses, um, bridges, and Arab villages. It said that if an Arab village uh, surrendered peacefully, they would stay in place. However, if they fought against the Haganah, uh, the uh, people would be expelled and the village demolished. This was a military plan. It was not a, a, uh, an order for, a political order for expulsion, as some have said. In Eastern Galilee, the commander of the Haganah Brigades was Yigal Alon, who was to be the best Israeli general during the war. He also felt that Arab villagers were either hostile or potentially hostile. In mid-April, the British were withdrawing from Sfat. Uh, there, there were 10,000 Arabs who would be sniping and shooting down on ultra-Orthodox uh, Jews, about 1,500 in number, defended by only a small number of soldiers. The British asked if the, uh, Arab, if the Jews wanted to be evacuated, they said no. The Haganah brigades attacked and captured Spot. All the, the Palestinian uh, Arabs fled. Yaffa was supposed to be part of the Arab state. By late April, 
there were still about uh, two thirds of the inhabitants still there. There was a small finger of Yafa that projected into Tel Aviv called Manchia. And Arab snipers would fire into South uh, Tel Aviv, which is a stronghold of the Ergun. The Ergun decided to capture Manchia. And after three days of bloody fighting, they were able to do so. However, the British, uh, being embarrassed by the Arab evacuation of Haifa, forced them out of Manchia. However, the, uh, the, Arabs, uh, the, the Arabs in Jaffa knew that uh, the British were only staying to May 13th. Uh, that the Arab militias were disorganized and particularly the Iraqi militias were looting and uh, raping. And by the time Jaffa surrendered on May 13, there were only about 5,000 Arabs uh, left. The remainder had fled south toward Gaza or aboard ship to um, Arab countries. In West Jerusalem, the critical battle was at the San Simeon Monastery in uh, Kataman, which pitted Palmach troops against um, Iraqi soldiers. After brutal fighting, the Iraqis uh, withdrew. And after that, all the uh, Arabs, Muslim and Christian fled uh, West Jerusalem. Along the coastal plain between Tel Aviv and Haifa, Jews outnumbered um, Arabs, and the Haganah was able to capture uh, villages one by one. There was no coordination for defense among the uh, Arab villages. And Haganah intelligence said best what happened. The Arabs have concluded that nowhere they are immune from the Jews' attack and the escape spread into exclusive Arab areas. Now it is a mass psychosis, an all-out evacuation. Arabs have abandoned hamlets before the Jews took any action against them, only on the basis of rumors about to be attacked. In fact, almost all uh, the uh, Arabs fled from the coastal plain. During the period uh, from uh, beginning of April to mid-May, about 300,000 Palestinian Arabs became refugees. Most fled before the Haganah even reached their villages, which you see in red. Yellow is where they were expelled and it tended to be uh, where uh, in possible invasion by the uh, Arab armies would take place, here by Syria, here by Jordan, here by Egypt. But Jews didn't have victories everywhere. The, the Etzion block was four kibbutzim that in isolated in Arab territory between Hebron and Bethlehem. On May 13th, the Arab Legion of Transjordan, along with thousands of uh, Palestinian Arab villagers, captured the kibbutzim. After the surrender, Palestinian Arabs uh, massacred uh, uh, about 150 Jews until it was put to a stop by the Jordanian soldiers. By early May, uh, the Arab street in the surrounding countries was in flame because of propaganda and actual events in Palestine. The Arab countries felt they had no choice but to invade, uh, but they had uh, all were suspicious of each other. King Abdullah of Transjordan wanted to take over uh, the land allotted to an Arab state. He had gotten an, an informal okay from the Jews and from the British. He was allied with the Iraqis. Opposing him was the Egyptians under King Farouk and the Syrians. However, all of them were suspicious of the, um, of the Mufti and a government in exile was, was not started. On 
May 14th, 1948, David Ben-Gurion proclaims the new state of Israel in Tel Aviv. On May 15th, the last British soldiers depart from the port of Haifa. The Haganah and Palmach uh, brigades were deployed. Um, they had motivation, they had uh, training and a unity of command, but they did not have any armor they, or artillery or planes. Uh, there were about 35,000 troops, but only 19,000 were frontline troops and only 10,000 had arms. There were plenty of weapons and ammunition uh, stored in Europe and in America, but it would take time to get there. Uh, as Ben-Gurion said, it's a race against time. If we hold out for two weeks, we will win. On May 15th, the Arab countries invaded here, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Transjordan, and Egypt. Uh, they did have armor, they did have airplanes, they did have artillery, but there was no coordination among the armies. The Arab Legion, the best trained uh, Arab force, uh, captured um, the West Bank area and disarmed the Palestinians. Uh, who now were irrelevant to the, to the rest of the war. The Arabs of Jerusalem, uh, thanks to Jewish um, uh, victories there, pleaded with King Abdullah to send troops to uh, Jerusalem to help them. There was also the prize of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. He decided to send troops to Jerusalem. He tried to break into uh, West uh, Jerusalem, but he was stopped by teenagers of Gadna at uh, the Hospice de Notre Dame uh, over here. The Arab Legion uh, then decided to bombard uh, West Jerusalem with 10,000 artillery shells. The, this was an international um, area but the UN did absolutely nothing to help the Jews. The Jewish quarter of Jerusalem was defended by about 200 Haganah and Irgun fighters. Over the next 10 days, there was house to house fighting. But finally on May 28th, when they had already 80% casualties and were out of ammunition, uh, the Jews surrendered. Uh, 1,200 ultra-Orthodox Jews left through Zion Gate to go into exile in West Jerusalem. They were protected from being massacred by the Palestinian Arabs by the Arab Legion. But after they left, the Arabs uh, looted and destroyed the Jewish quarter. The Arab Legion uh, troops captured Latrun, continuing the siege of Jerusalem. Uh, the uh, Jews in Jerusalem were desperate. They were down to 900 calories um, a day. Uh, the three attacks by Haganah forces were repulsed. Mickey Marcus, the American born uh, general in that region, uh, sent out uh, Haganah patrols south of Latrun to find a way to bypass uh, the blockade. They met up with Palmach patrols coming from Jerusalem and found a goat path, which in five days uh, of superhuman effort converted into the Burma road, relieving the siege of uh, Jerusalem just in the nick of time, because in one month, truce in place was called the next day on June 11th. Unfortunately, Mickey Marcus never lived to see that. He was killed by friendly fire the night before the truce uh, came into effect. The Egyptians uh, bombarded Tel Aviv from the air. They also sent one column that captured Hebron, so King Abdullah wouldn't get it, but they were ultimately defeated at Kibbutz uh, Ramat Rachel, just south of Jerusalem. The main thrust of the Egyptians were along the coastal plain. And here, 
unlike the, the, the Arab villages, the kibbutzim uh, inhabited and stayed and fought. Some were able to be bypassed, like Negba and uh, Kifar de Rome, after being attacked. But Yad, Kibbutz Yad Mordechai was on the direct uh, roadway. For five days, the defenders uh, fought off armored and artillery um, attacks until they had 50% casualties and had to evacuate. However, that extra time uh, uh, was used to get planes from Czechoslovakia, which attacked the Egyptian column and allowed the Haganah brigades to counterattack. Uh, both were actually unsuccessful, but the, the Egyptians went to, from offense to defense and never got closer than Ashdod, about 20 miles from Tel Aviv. The Syrians captured and destroyed a number of kibbutzim south of the Sea of Galilee, but were stopped at Deganya, the, the first uh, kibbutz. Uh, this uh, tank is still in the courtyard there. Haganah troops um, moved north along the bay and captured Akko, which hadn't been swollen by a uh, number of refugees. Most fled, but about 5,000 Arabs remain. This is actually the surrender document. On June 11th, the one month truce came into effect. Uh, 1,200 uh, Jews had been killed in less than a month of fighting. As General Moshe Carmel said, the truce came down upon us like dew from heaven. The formations are tired and weary. The greatest uh, crisis for the, the new state uh, came during the truce where uh, the Irgun had hired a ship, uh, the Altalena, to bring in supplies in part to, to Irgun units in, in the now Israel defense, of course. Uh, David Ben-Gurion uh, wanted only a unity of command and had uh, the ship sunk. There was fighting between Palmach troops led by Yitzhak Rabin and the Irgun. There were casualties on both sides. It looked like a beginning of a full-fledged civil war. But Menachem Bacon, in a secret radio address, said, do not raise a hand against a brother, not even today. It probably was his finest uh, uh, moment. The Irgun units were dissolved and the troops dispersed. During uh, the one-month troops, the Israelis made good use of it. Uh, 4,000 veterans of World War II came to help Israel. They were important in the technical services like uh, medical, armor, artillery, and the Air Corps. Uh, thousands of tons of supplies came from America and, um, and uh, Europe. The army increased in size to 64,000, later on to almost 100,000. The Arabs increased their soldiers in uh, Palestine, but they were hampered by a UN uh, arms embargo and were always short of ammunition. In May, uh, the UN appointed the, the Swedish diplomat, Count Volk Bernadotte, uh, to mediate between the Jews and Arabs. He actually knew nothing about uh, Palestine. And in late June, he said, recognition be accorded to the rights of residents of Palestine, who, because of the conditions created by the conflict there, have left their normal places of abode to return to their homes without restriction to regain possession of their property. Ben-Gurion retorted, war is war. We are not the ones who wanted it. We won't be righteous fools. There is no piety in returning the Arabs to Jaffa, only folly. Those who make war against us will shoulder the responsibility for it when they lose. During the uh, truce, the IDF planned Operation uh, Danny. The objective, to widen the narrow waist uh, of uh, the new state and to capture the area of Lidach or Lod, where the international airport was, 
and they had uh, false reports that there were 1,200 Jordanian soldiers poised to attack Tel Aviv. The airport was captured. Moshe Dayan, Moshe Dayan made a name for himself as his jeep column shot up Lida and uh, nearby Ramla. Arab village were captured, uh, almost all of them without a fight as the Arabs had fled ahead of time. Ramla and Lida were uh, captured by the IDF. Their numbers had swollen to, to uh, double the size, about 50,000 uh, people because of refugees. But there was trouble in Lida. There were about 300 Israeli garrison troops here. And there were 125 uh, Arab legionnaires of Jordan in the police fortress here. There were Jordanian fighters in the small mosque over here. Uh, calls to surrender arms uh, went unheeded. The next morning, three Jordanian armored cars blundered into Lida, not realizing it had been captured by the Israelis. The Palestinians, thinking that they were about to be saved, opened fire on the Israelis. Uh, during the ensuing firefight, about 70 Arab uh, fighters and non-combatants were killed. Ben-Gurion related, alone and I, uh, that's Yigal alone, the commander, held a consultation and uh, I agreed that it was essential to drive the inhabitants out. They didn't want to leave hostile Arabs behind the lines. Uh, 50,000 Arabs left Ramla and Lida and walked 10 to 15 miles uh, in the hot sun. They were thirsty, hungry, an unknown uh, number died. Uh, Yitzhak Rabin, who was in charge of the operation said, psychologically, this was one of the most difficult actions we undertook. The population of Lud did not leave willingly. This was the largest expulsion by Israelis during the war. The Palestinian Arabs uh, refugees in Amman were incensed and they marched on to King Abdullah's uh, palace and he met them and said, so you want to fight the Jews, do you? Very well, there is a recruiting office for the army at the back of my house. Go there and enlist. The rest of you get the hell down the hill. Very few Palestinians signed up for the war and many in, uh, in the Arab countries thought the Palestinians were cowards for not defending their country. In the North, the IDF uh, captured uh, the lower Galilee from the Arab Liberation Army, including Nazareth here. Ben-Gurion said, no people are to be moved from Nazareth. Uh, he knew the importance to Christianity. And the surrender agreement said, the Israeli government recognizes the civil rights of the Nazareth inhabitants on par with those of Israeli citizens. So during the 10 days of battle in July, there were an additional 100,000 Arab uh, refugees. 50,000 of them uh, came from Ramla and Lida. In July, 28th, during uh, 1948, during the second truce, uh, the Israeli cabinet uh, decided, as long as the war continues, there is no agreement on the return of the refugees. In, on September 16th, 1948, Count uh, Bernadotte uh, came up with a peace plan. It would actually give the Negev to the Arabs, uh, Jerusalem, including the 100,000 Jews there, would be internationalized. The Haifa port and, and uh, the Lida airport would be taken from Israel and made into free uh, ports. Concerning the Arabs, uh, uh, he was a little different from June. By this time, there were 475,000 uh, refugees, he wrote. It must not be supposed that the establishment of the right of refugees to return to their former homes provides a solution to the problem. The vast majority of the refugees may no longer have homes to return to, 
and the resettlement in the state of Israel presents an economic and social problem of special complexity. Uh, whether the refugees are resettled in the state of Israel or in one of the Arab states, which is different from June, placing them in an environment in which they can find means of employment. The next day on September 17th, he was assassinated by the Stern Gang in Jerusalem. Essentially, his proposals became his last will and testament. In late October, um, the Israeli leadership and the IDF worried that they would lose the Negev in any uh, peace agreements, decided to, uh, to have Operation Yoav. This was designed to destroy the Egyptian um, army and relieve the siege of the kibbutzim in the Negev. After a very heavy uh, fighting, on the front lines, the Israelis broke through. Uh, Beersheba was captured. Most of the inhabitants had fled. A number were expelled. The Egyptian army fled from Ishdud, which is now Ashdod, and Majda, which is now Ashkelon. Uh, many Arabs followed them uh, and left to go to uh, Gaza. Other villages surrendered to the IDF. Many were found deserted by the time the IDF arrived. In the north, the IDF uh, in a 60 hour campaign captured Upper Galilee from the Arab Liberation Army. Here the situation was more complex than in the south, which was composed only of Sunni Muslims. Here there were Sunni Muslims, Christians, and Druze. The last two, the uh, IDF tended to favor. Also in the Upper Galilee, only uh, about half of the Arabs uh, fled, about 30,000, mostly Muslims, uh, as, as compared to the coastal plain where almost all the Arabs fled. Uh, why? Uh, by this time, they knew of the terrible conditions in the Arab refugee uh, camps, and they had no illusions uh, that the Arabs were going to win the war. However, here in the Upper Galilee, the IDF committed a number of atrocities and hundreds of POWs were killed. Uh, the, the government and the IDF tried to hush it up because they did not want to, to tarnish the reputation of the army. Why did this occur? In part because of revenge. Um, many soldiers had been mutilated by uh, Arabs when they were killed. Uh, they were hardened by uh, almost a year of war. And about 20% had been refugees from Eastern Europe. And uh, they saw what the Russians did uh, to the Germans. However, a little bit later in December, the IDF came out with a order. Unjustifiable killings of civilians will be regarded as murder. Torture of placid civilians will be dealt with sharply. Arab populations must not be expelled except with special permission from the front, front combat headquarters. During this period from late October into early November, over 200,000 uh, further Arabs became refugees, mostly uh, from the south. Most of them had gone to Gaza, some into the West Bank. On December 11th, 1948, the UN General Assembly passed UN Resolution 194. It had 15 paragraphs. Most dealt with either the conciliation uh, commission, which would try to bring peace between the Arabs and the Jews, or concerning internationalization of Jerusalem. Only one paragraph, number 11, dealt with the Palestinian refugees. And it said, resolves that the refugees wishing to return to their homes and live in peace, who decides that? 
with their neighbors should be permitted to do so at the earliest practicable date and that compensation should be paid of those choosing not to return should be made good by the governments or authorities responsible. It instructs the Conciliation Commission to facilitate uh, reparation, uh, repatriation, which would be to Israel, but also resettlement uh, to Arab countries and economic and social rehabilitation of the refugees and the payment of compensation. The Arab uh, countries actually voted against the resolution because it would recognize the state of Israel. But a few weeks uh, later, uh, they changed their mind and uh, said the lasting and just solution of the problem of refugees is their repatriation. They left out the part about uh, resettlement. Why? If they uh, all went back to Israel, it would destroy demographically the state. And if it didn't, it would give a PR black eye to the Israelis. Abba Ibn gave the best uh, reply. He said, what the General Assembly did was to adopt a resolution calling upon the parties involved in the conflict to negotiate a final settlement of all their outstanding differences. There has never been any international sanction for the extravagant view that a comprehensive solution for the refugee problem could be carved out in complete isolation from the wide context of interstate relations in the area. The idea that the main purpose of that resolution, the restoration of peace, could be ignored and set aside while one of its specific purposes affecting refugees could be fulfilled never ever entered anyone's head. In late uh, December, uh, by then, tens of thousands of, of Jews had been pouring into the country. Ben-Gurion wanted to get on a peacetime uh, footing, demobilize uh, the army. And Operation Horav was instituted, the objective to uh, destroy the remaining Egyptian forces in uh, the Negev. Uh, this again was led by Yigal uh, alone. The, the Egyptians were almost completely surrounded, uh, but the, the Israelis were forced out of Sinai by British and American uh, pressure. But the Egyptians had enough. Thanks to the good offices of Ralph uh, Bunch, they signed an armistice with Israel in February. In March, the Lebanese did so. In April, uh, came the uh, turn of the Jordanians. As part of the settlement, uh, they turned over a number of Arab, Arab villages to Israel, uh, comprising about 20,000 Arabs. None were expelled. But in Syria was last to sign an armistice in uh, July. Pink are the Jewish gains during uh, the war. Uh, Israeli society proved to be very resilient, uh, successfully fighting against the Palestinian Arabs and the invasion by Arab countries. Uh, but it was a very costly victory. 1% or 6,000 uh, Israelis were killed. Uh, that would be equivalent to over 3 million uh, people in the United States killed in about a year of uh, fighting. Uh, the Palestinian Arab society uh, collapsed uh, during the, uh, the war. Uh, they had lost their leadership um, early on and uh, many fled rather than actually putting up a uh, fight. What was the total number of uh, Arab refugees? The best estimate is about 700,000. Uh, the red are those who became refugees in uh, the period April and May. The blue is uh, July and green is late October and uh, November. Uh, there is a long story of what happened between the Palestinian refugees and Israel after the armistice up until the present, uh, but I can answer any questions about that 
or else that's actually uh, is a, a, another lecture on itself. But I'll be happy to answer any questions if anybody has it. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. That was wonderful. I, I, I really can't thank you enough. We're going to entertain questions in a moment. Uh, the best way to ask your question, if you don't mind, is to put it in chat to me, and then I can uh, convey it to Eric. Uh, that would really be the most efficient way to do it. I uh, want to say, please, that, first of all, that this is sponsored by the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs, uh, with the support mostly from the Florida region. I uh, thank them very much for arranging this. If you are very happy with, uh, that's Blake Lynette waving, waking his, waving his hand. He is the president of the Florida region. <laughs> <laughs> we thank uh, Blake very much. We thank uh, Eric as well. If you would like to honor uh, Eric, uh, please go on fjmc.org slash donate and please do a <laughs> donation in his honor. And we will let him know that you have done so without providing the amount, of course, uh, so uh, that we can do that. I'll put that on chat in a moment. And again, I ask you if you do have a question to place your question on chat. There already is one. And that question is, where do the Arabs flee to? Okay, well, about two thirds of them never left uh, man what was mandatory Palestine. Uh, the uh, two thirds were either in Gaza or in the uh, West Bank. Actually, a third, only a third, uh, went to say um, Transjordan or to Lebanon or to uh, Syria. Most actually remained in the country. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I had a question. I got to remember what it was now. Uh, <laughs> when the war was declared yeah. by the Arab countries, am I correct in saying that they didn't actually invade until Israel declared itself to be a country? Yes, it, basically they were waiting until the British left. The last British soldier left at midnight, essentially, or early in the morning of May 15th. And then they invaded after that. Essentially, they did not want, they were reluctant to invade to begin with, uh, but they were sort of uh, had no choice because they, the leaders felt they would be overthrown if they didn't. And so they wanted to wait until the British, uh, the British left before they invaded the country. So even if Israel didn't declare itself that day, they probably would have invaded anyway. Okay, thank you. One of our uh, writers, it wasn't really a question, but they remarked that the road building and the story of Mickey Marcus were featured in the Kirk Douglas movie, Cast right. in Jordan's Shadow. Right. Okay. Any other Actually, questions? Actually, um, there we go. Now the questions are coming in. Yeah. Uh, what, one question was, were there times when the British protected the Jews? The, the answer is yes, they, they, they did. Um, for instance, um, they did so in Jewish majority areas or, or at other times that there was a convoy in January in 1948 going to the Etzion block, which was later conquered. Uh, they were ambushed by the Arabs and the British rescued uh, the, the survivors. Uh, and it, the British tended in Jewish majority area, they would turn over police fortresses to the Jews. In Arab majority areas, they would tend to turn over, say, police fortresses to the, the, uh, the Arabs. Their main aim was to get out of the country with the least number of casualties uh, that they could, truthfully. Okay, thank you. The next question is, uh, considering, these are not my questions, these come from, uh, this one is Eric Pastman. Uh, considering that uh, Jews were expelled from Arab countries, why didn't the Arab countries offer those Jewish homes to the Palestinian refugees? Actually, most of the expulsions in Arab countries took place for the most part after the war of, of independence or after it had, had already um, started. Um, I don't, I have never come across any writing that they actually offered it. And in fact, after the war, um, uh, in the, when after the UN Relief and Works Agency was founded in early 1950, 
It was supposed to have large scale projects in Syria, Iraq, and in Jordan, mainly to settle the Palestinian refugees. Uh, it never worked out. And the main reason the Palestinian refugees uh, did not want to go, so even these nearby uh, countries, why? Uh, one, they didn't want to give up benefits, but uh, probably the main reason it was an a honor and shame culture, and it would be devastating to them to admit uh, defeat to the Jews. Uh, so in large part, the Palestinian Arabs didn't want didn't want to go <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> and, and the follow-up to that is uh, asked by Gil Wolf, it happens to be an excellent segue, approximately how many Palestinians went to the Arab countries, that is left Gaza or didn't go to Gaza and the West Bank? Uh, it would be about a, a third. And uh, so that would be, what, about a um, couple, uh, about 200,000. Uh, uh, most of them went to uh, Transjordan, the other side of the river, uh, some also to Lebanon and Syria and is where they went, but most actually <laughs> didn't go very far. Okay. Uh, Paul Brownstein wanted to know, did the UN acknowledge that there were a roughly equal number of Jewish refugees? Uh, no. And, and remember, the Jewish refugees took place over a longer period of time. So uh, you know, like Yemen, they left in 1949, 50. Uh, Iraq was like 50, 51. Um, the North African states um, tended to be later in the 50s and Morocco particularly into the 60s. So it was a longer process uh, up till recently that had been pretty well ignored. The Israelis and Americans have been pushing at least compensation, you know, on any peace deal between Arabs and uh, Israelis to at least acknowledge and have compensation for uh, Jewish refugees also. Um, remember the, the Jews, about two thirds of those from Muslim countries, actually, about for 600,000 went to Israel and they were all resettled in the state. Okay. With, uh, with our, our, great our, hardship, actually. After, uh, after the British left on May, on May 15, uh, was the Jordan, yep. Le Jordan Legion still led by British officers? Yes, uh, for a period of time that they were. Um, at, at some point, um, the, the British withdrew most of their officers from the Arab Legion, but originally the answer is yes. Uh, Pasha Glub, uh, who was a British officer, was in charge of the Arab, uh, the Arab Legion. But they, the Arab Legion was the most capable uh, force, uh, Arab force, uh, fighting during uh, the war. Their main problem was because of the UN blockade, uh, UN embargo, they weren't able to get ammunition, uh, particularly from the British who were actually honoring it. And one of the reasons that the Burma Road was able to be built is the, the Arabs didn't, the, the Jordanians let, at Latrun did not want to use up any precious ammunition to uh, send shells in that direction. Okay. From Jim Heifetz, he asked, how many Palestinian Jews were forced out of their homes by the war and preceding hostilities? Uh, about 60,000, well, in, in Palestine, uh, about 60,000 Jews became internal refugees. Uh, eventually they were resettled, uh, some back to where they came from, others in different areas, but about 10% of the Jews became refugees uh, during the war. And many of them lived in either tent villages like you saw, they would like in Tel Aviv, they would live in synagogues or schools for a good period of, uh, of time. It, it, it wasn't easy for the civilians, uh, Jewish civilians either during the war. Well, I wanna thank you very much, Eric. It was very informative. You're an excellent speaker. It was a great presentation.
We thank you for your thank time. You. We, we thank Blake and everybody else from the Florida region for thank arranging this. Okay, thank you. Again, again, this is through the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. We hope you will remember and give them a, a nice donation. Again, fjmc.org slash donate. And then you can donate, or excuse me, uh, dedicate that to Eric or, any, or uh, Blake or anyone else you'd like. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much for participating, folks. Have a wonderful evening. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Again.